so this is where I'm going to uh, put all the Starlink 12 volt system uh, devices inside here um, and I'm going to show you where I'm going to locate this if this is the process so we're going to make this up first do a test run with it and uh, if I'm happy then we will <coughs> install it permanently in the van um, and I've looked at where this could go as well because I've particularly looked at the size of the box possible locations possible uh, size for the devices that need to go inside it and I think this is optimum uh, probably not perfect um, but it is an option so let's uh, show you where I want to when I want to put it so um, uh, what I want to be able to do is uh, have access to it but I don't uh, need to have regular or um, uh, access to it that actually says I need to do it all the time I just want to have the ability to have access to it so when I looked at possible locations for it uh, it was quite difficult to do that um, because uh, we're going to be living in here and this is going to be living space more than anything else getting into bed and out of bed and so on and so forth uh, and so this is getting pretty cramped in here as it is um, you know we've got enough space uh, there's still a few bits and pieces to do um, we've done some trials with it we are happy with it uh, but uh, we can't keep on putting things inside and, and doing so. So at the moment, the uh, tent is up. Um, but uh, I've left these down because um, one of the options I'm looking at is to locate it up here on this panel because it fits in there really nicely. Uh, I can't see when this is down, when this panel is down, I can't see a major use. Uh, it's going to be quite low um, and I'll give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, so bear with me. See where I'm looking at? Uh, to fit it up there um, and in preparation for that possibility what I've actually done is I've actually put in uh, two cables already which are behind this panel here uh, is uh, a number of um, fuses uh, a feed from the, the battery uh, so we've got a main feed 12 watts coming into a fuse block we've got some number of these devices going into the fuse block to power um, this uh, is separate this is actually linked to shore power so when I, I plug in the shore power at the back of the car um, this will be powered up so I can use this uh, as an alternative um, to the battery but um, what I'm looking at is doing the 12 volt feed from here which I've now actually added a switch here for that to isolate so I can actually isolate the power to the Starlink if I use the 12 volt system if not I will have this as a backup option to power something else uh, but then bring in the cables into the box there okay so what we're looking at now is if you and look closely what I've got is there's some sort of marks here on the inside of the box where when I turn it over we actually have points where either the feet would go or fittings would go to secure the box so I'm going to try and use these and then indent any bolts that I use here so they don't protrude from the box and fix the wood that will hold all the items inside like that and secure through these. Okay, so let's have a little look. Uh, I have to be aware of the connections at the back of the router and particularly the power point. Um, I want to be able to do a little extension from here that comes out of the box. I also need to be aware of the location of the box here because I have to run cables outside of the box that will bring power to this particular box itself, this separate unit. So to do that, 
I need to be aware where things are, where the box is going to be located to where I would bring the cables in because I don't want them to be protruding in an awkward place. I'd like them to be semi-hidden, if not completely hidden, which I doubt. But let's see what I can do. So uh, I, I'm looking at the moment and I'm thinking uh, the where this is located, this is probably a good location for this on this side. I think that's okay. Um, there's the power which comes in here, which I have to run a cable around. Because I'm thinking probably power needs to come out from the back here. Um, so I'm looking at that, possibly even putting um, one of these somewhere at the back as well uh, from a cable from here. Not sure about this location yet, uh, but we'll I'll come back to that. Um, so let's have a look with the parts that we've got. Uh, with each of the items. So this is uh, another one which is going to be pretty crucial. Uh, what we've got here is this is where the Starlink will fit into. And this converts the Starlink to an RG45 connection. And it's a very specific connection. So uh, I need to have a converter for that. But this basically is where the socket comes in. So I would like not to always bring the Starlink cable inside. So I'm looking at putting this as a socket that feeds outside and fixing this here possibly so that this further out actually sticks out through the back so it's easy to put the socket in. So I'm looking at that being literally the socket that comes out the back. Looking at that, not sure if it'll come off, but I'm hoping that's a possibility. And the connection from here this box, this little unit here, will go into this, which um, essentially is a, what's called a, a POE injector, a power over Ethernet injector. And that cable that comes out of that, the EG45, will need to be plugged into there. Um, and the cable from the router will be plugged into there. The whole purpose of this particular item is that it will provide power to the dish. But the Starlink router provides power to the dish, but I'm not using that. So I have to have this device instead. And this will take a current that will pass into the Ethernet cable and power will run into this and run into the Starlink cable, which will run to the dish. So that will have to be considered about the location as well. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, uh, the other items I need to do is I actually need to bring in the 12 volt uh, line. So I've got a, um, a 12 volt fuse box here, which I possibly locate here, maybe. I uh, need to look at that carefully about that location. Um, bringing in the cable from the vehicle here would be common sense to me, perhaps here or here. Uh, bringing in that 12 volt cable. I'm also looking at possibly uh, in the future put in a socket here for that 12 volt cable so it comes in um, and so I'll, uh, whatever line I bring in today uh, uh, will be bring power to these and this will bring power to the various items that I need for example uh, this item here uh, which will step up the current so the 12 volt comes into here uh, this receives the 12 volt into this little box steps up the current that will be provided and we'll need to go into this little box to give power to the Starlink dish because the Starlink dish is 48 volts. So this steps up. The 12 volts that come into here will be stepped up by to 48 volts, which will go into here, which will go to the cable to the Starlink dish. Okay, but I also obviously need the cable that comes from the router to go into here so that cable is powered up to the dish. And that's the purpose of this box, to be able to make sure that I've got the right power and current going to the dish. Okay, let's have a little look. Okay, so um, I'm not 100% about this, but we're going to give it a go, I think. Uh, here's some of the problems that I am looking at now with regards to this because of uh, this is a uh, basically a free router uh, and it's an exceptional router, absolutely fantastic router, but I didn't pay anything for this. So I'm hoping I can make use of this. Um, I'm <laughs> I've seen a few videos where you've just got this uh, a, a much smaller router. Uh, and maybe that would be a better choice, uh, but this was free. So uh, this is basically where I'm going to go and try and, and make use of. Uh, so 
what I'm looking at is some of the problems in uh, putting this inside the box and location wise is where the wires are going from each of the items so at the moment this is looking uh, like the the likelihood of where this needs to go uh, but here are some of the problems I still this is the uh, the end of the, um, the adapter for the Starlink cable that comes in and I still want that to protrude up through the back of the box but I'll, I'll show you the problem now in a second with that because the actual hinges here there's a thicker part on this box and if I just put it out a little I still won't be able to plug the cable in to, to the actual adapter so it actually needs to protrude, protrude out a lot more which obviously is uh, slightly problematic um, but I've just put this cable in um, and that does work in the sense of that positioning with all of the cables running from all of the items staying in the box securely, fixed to the wood securely. Uh, there's a little bit of play, I can play around to make it absolutely perfect but um, I've got some restrictions with some of the antennas. They don't need to be all fully up, but they'll still give a good signal so I can still have these up within the box but because of this router the way it is, uh, it, there is a slight uh, sort of uh, awkwardness about it, um, but at the moment uh, this is where I'm going to give it a go and see if I can make this work. A little look to see what we have. Um, so I've fixed these down to where I think they will be and I have got uh, the extra uh, Ethernet cable socket placed uh, at the back of the unit in case I need it plugged into the router. Uh, the Starlink adapter here fixed to the board and come out to the back. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but notice the big change is the router not here. In fact the router is here. So I can close the lid and have the router uh, fixed to the lid. And um, what you'll see is I've just got some securing bolts there to make sure that the router is fixed to where it needs to be. So some flexibility there, but I actually thought I'm, I'm just not too happy about the, the, the cramping space. I'm still not 100%, um, but it does mean that everything fits in really, really, really well. And uh, I've got all the cables in and I just need to have now, um, I'm running in through the 12 volt cable coming in through here to power uh, the 12 volt fuse box here. So um, negative and positive. And uh, perhaps we'll be into uh, a little bit of a test run. Um, let's just have a quick look at one or two areas where I have um, looked at uh, the sockets at the back of the box. So what we have here are these two sockets here for the Starlink and uh, an extra ethernet adapter and that's where the uh, socket for the cable is going to be. I'm going to possibly put a small Anderson socket here so I can just plug in plug out. Uh, so I didn't want to make this too awkward at this stage about how that's going to look. I will neaten this up when I uh, get the Anderson socket to make that a bit more permanent. Um, but uh, this is how it's looking at the moment. Okay, so uh, I've done most of the, the wiring in. I'm going to give this uh, just a little bit of a power up. Um, I've isolate, got an isolating switch here for this, so when this is fixed where it needs to be, uh, I can literally isolate this just by one switch. So hopefully this switch, which at the moment is just uh, these cables are attached to another fuse box behind here. Um, I'll have a little look, see what happens. 
Okay, we have power, that's good. So I proves that I've got 12 watts coming into this and I can activate this with a switch and I'm gonna switch it off, add the fuses and I can be able to do a test run. Just putting the uh, Starlink cable into the adapter now at the back of the box. And you have to bear with me a little because I'm looking with a uh, hand holding the camera. So I need to do a number of things at the same time. I just need to push that in and then we should be okay. That's okay. Let's power it up, see what happens. Okay, so I have a green light here. So I've got power going to the router. Okay, when I have a closer look now, I've got many of these lights that appear with one red, uh, and that tells me there's obviously a lack of connection to the internet. So let's start the next phase and see if I can address the link and configure this router so I can access the Starlink using this router. just my iPhone at the moment and you can see I have two TP link 2130 networks identified and this is obviously the router because it's a TP link router so I'm gonna have a little look to see how this can be configured so to help that I'm just gonna get her on the stand and we'll run through some filming of this while I try to work out What's going on? Okay, so let's have a little look. Let's log in to this router. Enter password. That's a good question. Let me go and have a quick look. Check the password word on the paperwork. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is uh, the amps which are being pulled by Starlink and the fridge now uh, while it's 12 volt and not running through the inverter. So let's recognize this, this is a difference here. I'm not running through this the inverter, this is going direct 12 volt. And you can see up here, now my amp up here will actually indicate that it's about seven and a half um, on average uh, I have got my fridge running again so this is a, a an equal comparison I had the fridge running permanently the fridge is on all the time solar power is running all the time so uh, this is looking pretty strong system uh, okay let's have a look at the data so here you go uh, the inverter versus the direct 12 volt uh, connection to the battery you can see the the lowest amps the highest amps and the average and th there is some things to note here and that is that the fridge freezer was on 100% of the time in this test or both uh, and this was in startup mode for the standing dish running for about 15 minutes and you can see that there was a two amp difference between uh, the inverter and the battery so really in real time what would you choose 